got a question here from Anne Montgomery. Hi Anne, how are you? How do you determine how large to paint people, animal, birds in a painting? And that's a very, very sharp question. A difficult one to answer. Generally, I don't allow a subject to occupy more than about 20% of the total area of a painting. I find that if I go more than that, then the painting of the subject takes control of the colours and values around it. In essence, I paint a scene, a context, then I put a subject in. I like to have the context control the, the degree to which I lift and energise that subject matter. Um, portrait painters go the other way. They like to have that subject occupy a large part of the overall painting. In that way, the subject controls the context. The context. So there we are, Anne. Good question. <laughs> Got a question here from Richard Komersky. Richard, I remember you. You won that um, Pelican Pete painting competition we held last year. Good to see a question from you, Richard. What do you do if you have ever experienced what to paint syndrome or what to paint syndrome? Question really is, is sometimes we get bogged down in not knowing where to go, what subject to paint. I always go back into my memory bank. I delve back into things that as a boy, I remember acutely and remember with interest and with some sort of degree of, well, romance. So I might have been fishing, I might have been playing with my dog, I might have been in a canoe, I might have been flying a kite. There are many, many things that we can step back into as children and dig out and give us some rich subjects to paint. Got a question here from Jean Doré. Got a question for you. When you paint people on romantic scenes or western scenes, do you wait till the background is dry before painting people? And so what kind of medium do you use on the background? Do you add liquid? Allowed to dry faster? Gene, I don't. I just let the painting dry naturally. You've got to remember that in most of my paintings, I don't really use any of those fancy mediums. I taught myself how to paint. And in that way, I made many mistakes, but I learned a few tricks as well. And one of the ones was that I use more thinner in my paint than a medium. Now, I know the medium is to bind the pigment together and to give it an anchor and a base to grip onto the previous coat. But as long as the paint is still holding that medium within the mix as it comes out of the tube, it will do the same thing. So as long as you don't put too much of that thinner in there, it'll just go off and dry fairly quickly, particularly if it's quite warm. You can put a fan on it and it'll go off very quickly. Put it out in the sun, the same thing will happen. So in your, if you're in a cold environment where the temperature's quite low, it'll take a longer time to dry. But generally, I like to have the background, well, about half dry before I dig into it again. But I can paint just when it's totally wet. So that's a bit of experience in there, but generally let it go off for a while until it's sort of tacky. Got a question here from Stephen Williamson. Stephen asks, what steps do you take before you paint a figure and how to approach it and ensure it has good solid composition? Stephen, before I go into a figure, I generally work out the size and where it's going to be in a painting. There are some golden rules about where you locate things in a painting to make sure that you've got balance and you've got strength of attention drawing into that focus point. Um, I generally plan that out and, um, and I decide where I really need the eye to go. First of all, and then second where to go, and then third where to go. I put a number of steps in my painting. I want to entertain the viewer and keep them guessing I want to take their eye where I want them to go, not just leave them hanging as an orphan somewhere. Take the eye, move it around so that they're following where you want them to go. It's very important to do that. In one of my books, I think it was a cowboy book, I talked about how to set up command posts in a painting. 
how you set up the strongest point, then the second point, then the third point, the fourth point, and so on. So that you've got an order in that painting. And that order governs how you're going to control the viewer. And it's important you do, because that's your storyline. Your storyline, remember, is contingent upon how well you entertain the viewer's eye. How well you can impart and connect with the story you're trying to say. So organise your painting so you've got these step-ins. And let, them, let the viewer find the answer. Don't tell him straight away. Let him find it. Be a magician. Got a question from Tony Gernon Hertzler. I hope I got the, uh, your surname right there, Tony. But it's a very, very good question. Approaching galleries would be my question. Now listen here, all of you people out there. That question is perhaps the biggest question that most artists have to ask. Particularly someone like me who's been, who's been painting professionally for 40 years. I've been pretty good at dealing with galleries. I've been pretty good at setting up a little economic model that allows me to paint professionally for a long time. Even during times that are a bit flimsy like now, I still go on. I still have a platform of economics which supports me well. How do you do that? Well, Tony, um, we've only got about uh, two or three hours left today and I can't occupy all that time. But look, approach a gallery, approach a gallery that you believe is a place where your paintings fit first. Uh, fit in terms of subject matter, then in terms of price. And then you really need to make sure that that gallery has got the selling tools in place. Make sure the gallery has got a good salesperson who's knowledgeable about art in general and knowledgeable about your art in particular so that they can entertain and coach an interest from a person and convert that into a sale. There's a number of factors here that are significant and they're critically important to approaching a gallery. You need to be an entertainer, not just a person who paints a picture. Remember, you're really one of the key salespersons to a painting that you do. Because many people want to ask the artist, why did you paint that? What was your inspiration? What controlled that subject matter? What's the story you're telling? Why did you do it that big? Why did you use those colours? They're all questions which only you can answer. When it comes down to uh, the price, I generally have an arrangement with the gallery where I just touch my nose, and that's my exit point, because we don't get down to the nitty gritty of asking for money. Somehow or other, I feel fairly uncomfortable about that, and I know most people out there do. And that's really the goal and the role of the gallery owner and the salespeople. That's what they're skilled to do, and that's what they should be doing. So when you approach a gallery, apart from measuring how well your painting will fit in that gallery in terms of subject matter, price, size and so on, it's also how well that gallery can embrace your art and project your art and make your art sell because that's what you want. At the end of the day, you've got to buy the paint, you've got to buy the brushes and you've got to buy the photographs and the camera gear and everything else and the lights and so on. And the best way to support that is by selling what you do. So go about it with a bit of thought and a bit of care and planning. Be a little bit astute about it. Don't just be a bumbler. Think about what you're going to do, go in with a plan, execute the plan and walk out with your head held high. Got a good question here from Virginia Nickel. Robert, you seem to paint almost immediately with most any scene. How do you know where to go next once you have a background? Not sure if I'm overthinking the painting sometimes. I have to really think while I'm on it. Virginia, I do, I have no trouble with, uh, with whatever I paint. I sort of look at it as a challenge. I don't look at it as something that's going to beat me or hit me on the head too hard. I look at everything I do in terms of its unique quality, its unique attraction. And every subject, it doesn't matter if you look at something from here, from here, from here, from here. If it's the same subject, 
there's a unique angle that should bring the, another part of you out, another way of painting. It should build, an, build another skill within your repertoire of great skills. So there's no problem in, in, um, in me taking on any scene because I find excitement is built in to every new angle, not just in every new scene, in old scenes from a different angle. And that's the energy in painting. That's what's so enthusiastic about, about going into painting because it's a challenge of being able to take something on and take it to a new level and take it where someone else hasn't taken it, including yourself. J.D. Fields, artwork by Ladybug. Now that's a good, a good handle. Good afternoon, sir. I have two questions. The first is, how do you find and approaching galleries to have your work hung? Let's handle that one first. Well, approach a gallery the same way as you would approach a good friend. Don't go in with fear in your speech or in your look or in the how, way you address someone. Go in with confidence, with a degree of humility and also with a degree of respect to that person because that person is hopefully going to be your best ally. That person hopefully is going to be able to sell your works and provide you with the income that you need to sustain yourself. So you go in with, with confidence, with understanding, with a willingness to share your art and a willingness to share the story about your art and about yourself. That's important. The second part of this question, and second for a beginner, what do they need in supplies and how long do they paint in the plain air? My association would like me to start a plain air event or group and I know nothing about plain air painting. Well, plain air painting is simply going outdoors, sticking an easel up and painting what you see in front of you. It doesn't matter whether it's windy, uh, sunny, uh, rainy or whatever. So there's no great drama in that. But what it does, does for you is it, it, it brings out your understanding of what happens with the notion of aerial perspective. And by that I mean what happens to colours and the values of colours as you apply distance between you and the horizon. Plain air makes you look hard at things. By standing in front of a tree, you have got the problem of being, perhaps, uh, of seeing too much detail. You need to be able to edit that detail down. I did that by closing one eye and sort of half closing the other one. That edits down that detail. When I want to see the detail, I open up both eyes. Um, Plain air uh, painting is great for looking at how distance affects colour. When does that red disappear? At what point in that recession from me to the horizon does the red disappear? Does the blue dominate? And that's the real benefit of plain air painting. It's taking what you learn from a book and applying it in reality to a scene. Always good to start with a scene that you like as well. Priyanka. Kaushik. Hi Robert, I hope I got that right. I recently started painting. I would like to know basic approach and fundamentals of painting landscape and seascape and how to sell artwork. Well listen here, that would occupy an entire book or several books to answer that. The basic approach to painting, start with a limited palette. Just three colours, cobalt blue, light red and yellow ochre and a titanium white. Start with that and stay with that for a couple of years till you understand what happens to paint when you mix them together. Stay with that until you understand how to mix a value, a dark value and a light value. Stay with that until you understand how to use the brushes. And don't go to too many brushes. I only use three brushes. And that means that I'm not going to have too many ways of getting the one result. I try to use a brush that'll do everything. I try to use paint to achieve everything. A few paints, a few tubes of paint, not a whole lot. If I want a green, I don't go in the shop and buy a green. I'll mix it. That's what you've got to do in painting. Learn from a, a small, tight starting point and then grow with that. You can add the other colours later on. Selling your artworks, well, Again, we need to have an agent to sell our paintings. Um, 
at how good you believe you are is not necessarily what the gallery will see in you. Remember, the, a gallery is dealing with a lot of artists and with a lot of art. And a good gallery owner will see where you fit into his array of art. As much as you think that you're very precious and very special, the gallery may not think that. So be prepared for it to be knocked back a little bit. But that being said, don't give up. A lot of people get, they get hurt and they don't go back to a gallery and they sort of paint alone and, and have got anger in them. Don't be angry about a gallery that, that uh, turns you down. The first gallery I went to, they said, no, come back another day. I said, okay, that's your attitude. I'll just go back and try again. And I went back and did a better painting. I didn't go into, a, in, into my shell. I said, well, that's a challenge. Let's see if I can paint better rather than paint worse. Take it, take it the right way, not the, not the wrong way. Remember, the gallery is an agent. They're there to do a job. And they deserve their commission, particularly if they're good at what they do. Your job is to come up with something that they want to sell, can sell, and fits with their marketplace. So be astute about what you paint when you go to a gallery. Look at how your art fits into what they're selling. Look, if, you, if they're selling all still life, then no good you going in there with a landscape. No good you going in there with a portrait, because that's not what they sell. So pick your gallery, work out your price point so that you fit into their price range, and make sure that when you take a painting in, it's well presented and you can talk about it with confidence and understanding so that you're energising the gallery owner to thinking your way. You're energising him to want to sell and be with you. In that way, you'll possibly get a good result. I hope you enjoyed those tips and those answers I gave to some pretty difficult questions. Listen, if you've got friends who paint, who've got problems with painting, and want to find out what I would say about it, then please tell them to come and look at my Facebook page because I'm not going to give up on anyone. I'm going to be here to the end with you and I'm going to make you paint better because that, at the end of the day, is something that I've been able to enjoy all my life and I still enjoy it and I love to share it. So don't be afraid. Tell your friends. Come and see Bob.